But there is a great, great message for us about Jonah. Because we are like Jonah, right? We are, we were disobedient. And once we obey, we are like the Nineveh in one point in our time. We were cruel, we were wicked, we are selfish, we are greedy. But how much yung kasalanan ginawa natin, walang gaanong kabigat sa Panginoon. Because that's the reason why He sent His Son, Jesus Christ. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So, pamilyar po ba tayo sa buhay ni Jonah? Who is Jonah? Sino ang pamilyar sa atin sa buhay ni Jonah? So, can you think about, ano yung unang naisip natin nung nabasa natin yung buhay ni Jonah? Ano yung naisip natin? Is it real? Is it just a fiction? Or does God want to say something or to impart something as a message for all of us? Kasi nung unang nabasa natin yung Jonah, probably when we were young or younger, so parang hirap paniwalaan, ano? But today, we're gonna talk about chapter 3 alone because next week is about chapter 4. Before we proceed or we continue or we return to the book of Jonah, let me set the stage of what has previously happened in the first two chapters about this book. Okay? So Jonah, so it is, si Jonah po ay isang prophet. Okay? Si Jonah po ay isang prophet and he is unique among the prophets. So pag prophet, ibig sabihin siya yung messenger of God. And the book of Jonah, this is chapter 3, the, si Jonah ay nagbigay ng, ng mensahe ang Panginoon para sabihin sa kanya that you have to deliver this message to Nineveh. So Nineveh is a great city in Assyrian Empire during the ancient Orient. Nineveh was a great city. Isa siya sa mga Assyrian Empire during the, during the ancient Orient. And uh, makita natin dito that this book of Jonah, because most of the books of the prophets, they talk about the message of God. Because the task of the prophet is to deliver God's message. But what is unique about the book of Jonah is that it talks more of the prophet instead of the message of the prophet from God. So to set it up, again, Nineveh is a great city in Assyria that is known from it's cruelty. They are wicked. So based on the past biblical history and historical resources, malalaman natin ang Nineveh is part of Assyria which is really wicked and they are cruel and violent. They want to attack all those neighboring countries or cities including Israel. So kilala sila sa pagiging napakasama. At ang ibinigay ng Panginoon kay Jonah bilang isang propeta ay isend yung message niya message of salvation dun sa mga Assyrian or in particular sa mga Ninevites. So is it hard for us to send a message dun sa mga taong kaaway natin which is a good message, a message of salvation. But let me continue first to give you and to set up the stage about what has happened before this chapter 3. As I've mentioned, this is a words of a prophet more not a words of the prophet but this story about a prophet is but a unique prophet named Jonah. So what happened in chapter 1, if I may continue, there are 17 verses. And sabi ni Lord, Jonah, I have a message for the Ninevites. But instead, imagine Jonah was a prophet. Instead of following and obeying God, what he did was he flee from the presence of the Lord. Instead of going to Nineveh, he go the other way. He went to Tarshish. Why does he run? For whatever reason, the biblical did not mention bakit hindi sumunod si Jonah kay Lord or kay God. Instead of again, tinuloy niya, nagpunta siya sa isang lugar kung saan nakakita siya ng isang ship. So karagtong ng chapter 1 is Jonah went to a ship, nagbayad siya dun sa captain at sumakay siya. But again, the Lord has hurled a tempestuous wind, isang storm, napakalakas kung saan halos mawasak o masira na yung kanilang ship or yung kanilang barko. And all of them, all the mariners, including the captain, they were praying to their own gods. Pero si Jonah, bumaba siya, he went down to the inner part of the ship, and he 
sleep. So ano ginawa ngayon ng, ano, ng captain? Bumaba siya ngayon, sinunod niya si Jonah. Hello, kami dito nagpapakahirap. Itinapo na namin yung ibang mga cargo namin para lang maisalba itong barko. Pero ikaw natutulog ka pa sa ilalim. Tapos sabi niya, gumising ka at magpray ka sa Panginoon mo kasi kami tumatawag kami sa sarili-sarili naming Diyos. And after that, tinanong nila, sino ka ba? Saan ka ba nanggaling? Ano ba trabaho mo? And sabi ni Jonah, dun sa mga sailors or dun sa mga mariner, I am a Hebrew. I'm a foreigner. And I was tasked by the Lord and I'm a prophet. I was tasked to give the message to Nineveh. But I flee from God and now I'm going to Tarshish. And I am certain that my God is the one who made the sea and the dry land. At ako ang dahilan, kaya nagkaroon ng matinding bagyo ngayon na dinanaralas natin. At sabi niya, dun sa mga mari marino o dun sa mga sailors, mabuti pa, itapon niyo ako. You hurled me or you throw me overboard para ma matapos na tong, tong uh, bagyo na to. So do you think Jonah was good at that time? So again, it's because of his selfish intent. Kasi alam niya, gusto ko nang matapos itong paghihirap ko dahil nga ayokong sumunod sa Panginoon. Ang ginawa ng mga marino, hindi namin kayang lagyan ng bakas ng dugo ng aming mga kamay. So nagkas sila ng lats. At napunta na naman, again, na si Jonah talaga ang dahilan kung bakit nagkakaroon ng matinding bagyo or storm during that time. So again, they still decided to row and row, but really they can't do and they couldn't do anything until they decided to throw Jonah overboard. So ganun na nangyari, tinapon na si Jonah. Ano ang nangyari pagkatapos niyan? Dito natapos yung chapter 1. Then we go now, I mean, great fish shallows Jonah. Parang fiction, ano? Hindi binanggit dito kung ano ba siya, whale, but this is a great fish. A big fish swallowed Jonah. So pag kinain tayo ng pating, o kinain tayo ng balyan, ano mangyayara sa mga matay tayo, di ba? But the Bible tells us that Jonah did not die. And he was swallowed or by this great fish. So ang sabi natin dyan, this could be a certain death. But what happened to Jonah in chapter 2? Jonah was in the belly of this great fish. And what he did in that belly for three days and three nights, he prayed. And that was what preached or shared to us last Sunday by Pastor Sinan, the prayer of Jonah during the time that he was in the belly of the great fish. So after three days, Jonah survived. So, itong fish na to is appointed by God, was appointed by God. And again, God okay, appointed this great fish to vomit Jonah out to the dry land. And that is the time that Jonah now again was alive and God spoke to him again. And this is the time that God told him, go to Nineveh and preach what I tell you or what I told you. At dyan na po yung time kung saan Magsisimula tayo, ito na po yung Jonah chapter. Jonah goes to Nineveh. So dyan pa lang po, introduction pa lang po yung nakita natin kanina. This is our chapter for today. Jonah chapter 3, 10 verses. A content that is really useful for us. I thought when I was younger, it was a fiction. But God is a message for us this afternoon. So let us read... Um, Salit responsibly, salit salit ang tayo. I'll start with the first verse, then you, on the second, and so on and so forth. Jonah goes to Nineveh. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, three days journey in breath. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They called for a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them to the least of them. And he issued a proclamation and published through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles 
let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed or drink water. Verse 9, who knows? God may turn and relent and turn from his first anger so that we may not perish. Altogether, when God saw that what they did, how they turned from their evil way, God relented of the disaster that he had said he would do to them, and he did not do it. Let us pray. Almighty Father in heaven, we thank you for this time that we can come together as a body of Christ. Salamat, Lord, that you have given us a privilege to worship together. Thank you, Lord, that just now we could sing songs for you, songs of praises, because you are worthy. You are our Father. You are our Creator. Lord, we know that we don't deserve all these things that you have given us, the blessings, the mercy and love, the grace, Lord, but we thank you for what you have done to us, Lord. Thank you for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for us to be saved, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Lord, at this time, we commit to you the time that we are going to study and learn from the book of Jonah. We don't want to hear the, the opinion of men, Lord, but we want to hear your message to us this afternoon. Lord, samahan po kami. Buksan mo ang aming mga puso at isipan upang, Lord, ikaw ang mag-reveal sa amin. Kung ano po yung mensahe na gusto mong ipahiwatig at ihayag sa amin upang aming buhay mabago, may apply namin to Lord sa aming pang-araw-araw na ginagawa at iniisip. Lord, samahan mo kami sa hapong ito at patawad, Lord, sa aming mga pagkakasala sa iyo. We thank you again for the week that you have given us and for the time that you have given this day na kami po ay magkakaroon ng fellowship. We have had this privilege to study your word and to listen to you, O Lord. Salamat pong muli sa pangalan po ni Jesus. Ito po ang aming dalangin. Amen. So, I hope that we have read this clearly, no? Nakita natin dito that babalikan natin yung sinabi, si Jonah now is ready to go to Nineveh. Pagkatapos niyang mag-rebel, di ba? Hindi siya sumunod. Now he is ready to go to this Nineveh. And it is a great city. The word great is probably huge. Three days in breath. Pero balikan natin yung unang sinabi. The word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time. Di ba? Ang sarap isipin, second time, no? So how many times did we rebel against God? And God has forgiven us. Di ba? Maraming beses sinasabi sa atin ng Panginoon, I want you to do this. But we tend to follow our own ways, our own opinions, and our own plan. But God is forgiving always. This word second time is very impactful para sa atin because the Lord is forgiving. The Lord is compassionate. Second time, kahit na nagkamali si Jonah, and even he was a prophet, he still disobeyed God, but God has given him a second time. So verse 2, ang sabi is, Arose, go to Nineveh, the great city, and call out against it, the message that I tell you. So, inuutusan ng Panginoon, ng Diyos, si Jonah, na pumunta ka dito sa lugar kung saan ihahayag mo ang mensahe na sinasabi, sasabihin ko sa iyo o sinasabi ko sa iyo. So, Jonah rose. So, makita natin dito, Jonah rose and went to Nineveh. So, tayo ba? Ano yung great commission sa atin bilang mga Kristiyano? Ano yung dapat natin ginagawa kagaya ni Jonah? Di ba? Meron tayong Tas, lagi natin sinasabi, we were created for a purpose. Everything happens for a purpose. But as a Christian, as a believer, ano ba yung ating dapat na commission? So binigyan ng commission ngayon si Jonah ng Panginoong Diyos. Pumunta ka sa Nineveh at ihayag mo ang mensahe ng Panginoon. So for us right now, when we receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we have a task. We have this great commission that we can find in the Bible, in Matthew 28, 19, 20. For Christians, this is very, very common. Sabi sa atin, Jesus Christ, which Jesus Christ told to his disciples before he ascended to heaven, sa kanyang 11 disciples, and sabi niya, go, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. So, ganyan ba yung buhay natin? Are we fulfilling? Are we doing the Great Commission sa ating buhay? Sabihin natin, nagkatrabaho ko eh. Busy ako. But where is our mission field? Hindi naman muna kinakailangan pumunta tayo sa Africa or sa malalayong lugar. Mission field could be everywhere, right? 
pwede sa workplaces, pwede sa neighborhood, pwede sa home, or kahit saan tayo magpunta sa school, or when we go back to our respective places or homes in the Philippines, we could share the gospel. And that is a great commission given to us. Do we have that kind of mentality and attitude sa ating buhay? Or do we still pursue the things that we like most, kagaya ni Jonah? But again, let us continue sa verse 3. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, three days journey in breath. Okay? Jonah now began to go into the city, going on this journey, and he called out, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So nakita niyo yung word dito, he called out yet, and forty days, Nineveh shall be overthrown. As I mentioned, Nineveh was a violent and cruel city, wicked city. And uh, see, see, see Jonah, he was a Hebrew. He was an Israelite. So kaaway nila ang Nineveh, ang Assyria. And yet, ang sabi sa kanya ng Panginoon, pumunta ka doon at ishare mo yung mensahe ko. So ano ang ano mensahe ng Panginoon na gustong ipahayag niya through Jonah? Yet, forty days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. The word overthrown was used also here in the Sodom and Gomorrah. Bago ginunaw and destroyed yung Sodom and Gomorrah. Right? So, ang sabi in forty days, magsisi na kayo because this great city of Nineveh will be overthrown. So, ano ang naging reaction ng mga tao? Imagine. Just with a simple message, Yet forty days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. The next verse is amazing. And the people of Nineveh believe God. They call for a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them to the least of them. Simple message. Yet forty days, Nineveh shall be overthrown. He was a foreigner in that city. He was a nobody in that city, right? Pero ano nangyari? Sinyere lang yung mensahe ng Panginoon. And the people of Nineveh believe God. And the word believe here is not just believe, it's make certain they really trust on what the Lord is going to do sa kanila. So you see the power of God? It was never told that Jonah was eloquent and good in convincing or persuading. But just a simple message that Nineveh shall be overthrown in 40 days. Isn't it amazing? Nakita nyo? Unang-una, na-amaze tayo because si Jonah, swallowed by a great fish, nabuhay siya ng three days. Ngayon naman, in just simple words or statements na sinabi niya, the whole city believe God. At hindi lang yun. Kasi yung believe is a word that is sometimes very broad, right? They called for a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them to the least of them. Ano ba yung sackcloth? This sackcloth is yun yung parang balat ng goat, that very coarse, hindi siya fine, rough. Na pag mo siya, is napaka uncomfortable. It is a sign of mourning. It is a sign of mourning if you are really mourning, kumbaga naglulukso ka nung panahon ng ancient times. Na ako ngayon, it is a sign that you are mourning. You are uncomfortable with your sin. It's a genuine demonstration and manifestation na nagsisisi na ako sa aking mga salanan. And also, just think about the the verse. The word reached the king of Nineveh. Imagine even the king of Nineveh. And he arose from his throne, removed his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. So, hindi lang yung mga tao, hindi lang yung mga commoner, hindi lang yung mga mahihirap o mayayaman, o yung may mga pwesta sa gobyerno. Even the king, tinanggal niya yung kanyang robe as a king, at nagsuot siya ng sackcloth, at umupo siya sa ashes. So these are symbols, genuine symbols that you are repentant of your sins na hindi na ako komportable at mali ang ginagawa ko at nagsisisi ako ng lubusan at gusto kong ilagay ang aking pananampalataya sa Panginoon. Imagine that powerful word of the Lord. It's not the word of Jonah. Jonah was just a man. Pero nagsisi even the king, yung pinakamataas. And he issued a proclamation and published through Nineveh 
by the decree of the king and his nobles, let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed or drink water. Hindi lang sila nagsawat ng sakloth. Hindi lang sila umupo sa ashes. Yung king mismo nagbigay ng decree na lahat ay magfa-fast. Hindi binanggit dito kung gaano katagal yung fasting. According to science, in three days' time, mabubuhay ka kung may tubig. Pero ang fasting, nor drink, nor eat, hindi binanggit. This is a rough fasting. It really shows the sincerity of how repentant they were during this time. Tuloy pa natin. So verse 8, But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth, and let them call out mightily to God, let everyone turn from his evil way and from his violence that is, that is in his hands. Nakita natin dito, yung king, yung decree niya, hindi lamang sa mga tao, hindi sa lahat ng tao, pati dun sa mga beast, so mga baka, kalabaw, kung ano man yung mga, mga nandun. Para ipakita niya ng buong city na sila ay repentant, sila ay nagsisisi. So again, this repentance, not just a repentance or uh, just they are remorseful or they are regretting what they have done. This a true faith in Jesus Christ or in, in the Lord. No? Na pinakikita nila na talagang mali yung ginagawa ko at ako ay sincere at genuine. And again, itong paglalagay o pagsuot ng saklot at pagupo sa ashes, this is not a task or a works that is meritorious or magkakaroon ka ng merit para ikaw ay patawarin ng Panginoon. This is a genuine demonstration that they are really sincere sa kanilang paghingi ng tawad sa Panginoon. So again, hindi dahil sa ginawa nilang ito, kaya sila patatawarin ng Panginoon because God doesn't want our works. Ang gusto ng Panginoon yung puso natin. And because sa puso nila inward, going outward, nagmanifest sa kanila yung tunay na nararamdaman nila sa kanilang mga puso that we are not comfortable with what we have done and what we are doing and how we live. We want to show to God that ito talaga yung aming nasa puso namin. And, ang sabi pa ng king, who knows, God may turn and relent and turn from his first anger so that we may not perish. So, sa dikri niya, sabi niya, maaaring ang Diyos mag-relent siya of the disaster na sinasabi nitong si Jonah. And the last verse, when God saw what they did, you see how compassionate and forgiving and merciful is God? How they turned from their evil way, God relented of the disaster that He said He would do to them, and He did not do it. So, napakaganda ng mensahe ng Biblia, no? even this book of Jonah, that I thought last time was just a simple fiction. So, it reminds me of three Napakagandang wonderful words or wonderful things. No? Unang-una, nakita natin dito yung repentance. No? True repentance and faith. Yeah? Pangalawang words after repentance is yung obedience. It's important. At pangatlong word is yung compassion. Compassion of God. God's compassion even before is the same. Yung compassion niya sa mga Ninevites who are cruel and violent and wicked is still compassionate sa atin. So do you realize that we are not different from the Ninevites? Tayo rin eh. Hindi man sa ginagawa natin, pero sa puso natin, we are once the enemy of God. So let's see. Sabi sa Ezekiel 18.23, Have I any pleasure in the death of the wicked, declares the Lord God, and not rather that he should turn from his way and live. So tayo, no? Nung hindi pa tayo save, we are enemies of God. We were enemies of God. Then, there comes a time because of the grace of God, He put that faith. He opened our heart. Kaya tayo, nakakilala sa Panginoon at tinanggap natin siya bilang ating Panginoon at sariling tagapagligtas. Dahil tahit, ga, gano tayo kasama, it doesn't matter how wicked or how sinful you are or you were, God is able to forgive you. So repentance is very important through repentance. And 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 to 4 tells us this is referring to the praying for all people is good and it is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. So ito yung desire ng Panginoon 
na ang lahat ay mag-repent and come to the knowledge of the truth. Right? So, ganun din ba tayo? So, mahirap, ano? Especially sa ating mga kaaway, no? O sa mga taong hindi natin talaga, kung baga sabihin, feel na ipag-pray. Meron pa tayong mga sinasabi minsan na itong taong to, probably it could be your evil boss, no? Or probably a far away uh, terrorist, no? Na, ay, wala na, wala nang pag-asa yan. So, yung tayong lumayo, minsan, mga kaibigan din natin, sometimes, truth be told, no? We try to, instead of embracing, we try to replace him. Wag na lang. And, uh, di ba? In, instead of uh, mingling with him, we try to avoid, no? Instead of forgiving, we try to judge. It's because that's a human nature, because we're still living in our flesh. Right? But God, the compassion of God is different from man. Huh? So God loves even the wicked, the sinner, like us. Because we, were, we are sinners until now, but God is continuously giving us, forgiving us from our sins. So, ito yung importante, no? na napakagandang manifestation ng king. He arose from his throne, removed his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. I'd like to give emphasis again dito. So yung pag-upo niya sa ashes, yung pag sa suot niya ng, ng sackcloth, hindi yan para makagain siya ng forgiveness. Because God wouldn't like that. But this is just an ito, inu, uh, outward manifestation from his inward na nararamdaman na ito ang gagawin ko. Imagine, he is a king. So, humility yung pinakita niya, even though I'm a king, magsasawa ko ng, ng, ng sakloth, to the lowest, not only to the lowest human form, but even to the beast. Lahat tayo ay ganito. Who knows, God may turn away and relent from the disaster na nakaabang sa atin. And that is true repentance. Tingnan natin dito yung repentance. No? Biblical repentance is different from just a simple repentance. Actually, we had a discussion here no? si ni Brother Jojo yung about yung aming salvation series sa aming 100 Bible lessons. We talk about this repentance and faith. Sabi nga ng isang brother, repentance and faith is just like a two-coin. No? Hindi pwedeng paghiwalayin yan. Because through repentance comes with the faith. That's why sinasabi ni Pastor Jason lagi, grant them faith in Jesus Christ. Repentance from sin and faith in Jesus. Repentance and faith should be together. So it's like this. As explained nga ni Pastor Jason. So pag ako, nag na, so ito yung patungo ko dito, di ba? This is sin. This is the world. This is my flesh. So when I repented, I have to turn away from all these things, the worldly things, the flesh na gusto natin gawin. And I have to turn back and to go to Jesus. So the positive aspect is I have to turn and have faith in Jesus Christ. And the negative aspect, I have to repent and turn from my sin. So that is the biblical aspect or faith that involves these two. The positive aspect which, which is faith and the negative aspect which is repentance. Faith without repentance is not a true faith. Repentance without faith is also insufficient or incomplete. It should be both because repentance without faith could be just a remorse or a regret. Right? So the Bible tells us in Mark 1.15, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. So not only repent, but also believe in the gospel. Same in Luke 13.3. No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will likewise perish. So itong dalawang ito ay laging magkasama. 2 Peter 3.9. The Bible tells us, The Lord is not slow to fulfill His promise. As some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but all should reach repentance. Now, let us summarize what are the truths that we see in the life of Jonah. We see six truths. The first one is not only about the great fish, but we know that God's people are rebels. You and I, we are all rebels until now. Even though we are believers, we are Christians, we deem that we are followers of Christ, but we are still rebels. Because not only of what we do, but what we think, no? And what we ought to do, we don't do. 
We are rebels because most of the time we follow our flesh. Satan is using the world to entice our flesh and we are weak. That's the truth. And also, unbelievers exercise faith. Yun yung in-reveal sa atin that the unbelievers, the Ninevites, the Assyrians, they're unbelievers. But when Jonah went to that place, they exercised faith and they also could be saved. Number three, truth is that God loves men. It is truth since the very beginning. He created Adam and Eve. He loved Adam and Eve. He loves you. He loves me. He loves all of us. But because we are rebellious, that's why in the Bible, the wrath of God was us, well, sometimes bestowed to them, right? And faith and repentance as a must, are a must, right? Faith and repentance, not a complete understanding. It's not the complete understanding of the Bible, of the verses, of the chapters, how we explain it. But this is a must, faith and repentance. And God's nature is seen here. In the book of Jonah, how merciful, how compassionate, how loving God is. And He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God controls all creation. He controls even the great fish. He controls the winds. He con the wind and the storm. He controls the worm, the plants, and He controls everything. So these are Theological truths na nakita natin sa buhay ni Jonah. Very important sa ating buhay. Kasi, we have to reflect. In Luke 6, verses 27, 28, 30 to 34, But I say to you who here love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. Because if you love those who love you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. And if you lend to those from whom you expect to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to get back the same amount. So that is another commandment that is not so easy na magawa natin. Especially, we, we don't have the Holy Spirit sa ating buhay. So if we love our friends, if we love those lovable people, it is normal. Because even the unbelievers, even those who don't know God, that is a natural tendency of man, right? But if we love and help and minister those people that are unlovable or unloving, or those people na wala tayong mapapala, no? Bakit katutulungan si brother or sister? Wala naman ako magigain. Isn't it that ang iniisip natin, pupunta ako sa isang lugar, tutulong ako because I have a purpose. It is a selfish purpose. I have something to gain. Na in return, baka pagdating ng araw, matulungan niya rin ako. But is that the purpose of God? No? Is that what Jesus has taught us during His stay here on earth for three years? Kasama yung kanyang mga disciples. Is that the real compassion? Is that the real mercy? Meron ba tayo niyan? So loving enemies, we can't do that. As I've said, it's difficult. So it's a process, but it's not impossible because we have to be Christ-like. 2 Timothy 24, 26, And the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but kind to everyone, able to teach patiently, enduring evil, Correcting his opponents with gentleness, God may perhaps grant them repentance leading to the knowledge of the truth. Similar to what happened to the Ninevites when Jonah shared God's message. And they may come to their senses and escape for the snare of the devil after being captured by him to do his will. Now, let me ask this question sa inyo ngayon. As we almost end this very simple message, Ten, ten verses, simple, to summarize it all in a nutshell, si God, inutusan si Jonah na pumunta sa Nineveh. Nineveh is a cruel, violent, kaaway ng Israel, hated place. Right? 
Pero sumunod siya. That is the obedience of Jonah. He was obedient at least on the second time. Di ba ganun din tayo minsan? Inutusan tayo? I remember, many years ago, nung nasa Pilipinas pa ako, when I started to attend Christian in Valenzuela, about 1990s, no? May, some, may pastor doon sa Valenzuela, sinasabi sa akin na, Gilbert, I think pwede ka namin kunin na song leader. Sabi niya. And my wife know, knew about this and know, knows about this. Ang excuse ko is, hindi ako nag-excuse. Punta ka ng gantong oras, mga 1997 yata. Ano yung ginawa ko? Hindi ako umattend. Hindi ako dumulo. No, ni, wala, wala. Hindi na lang ako pumunta. Kala lang, ganoon na nangyayari. Hanggang sa, pumunta na ako ng Singapore. And after a year, may not many years, 2001, 2003, nag-start din pala ako sa Singapore, naging song leader din ako. Sig- uh, sa- Ginamit yung mga brothers and sisters, naging courage. And after that, naging, nagkaroon kami ng ministry, ng SF, tapos God is using me now, kahit pa paano, dito. And I'm not afraid to share the word of God because this is not my words. I am just like Jonah who's sharing the word of God. It's not my word, it's not my opinion, but this is from the Bible. This is His word. I'm just a messenger. I don't have to be eloquent. I don't have to be as good as those probably broadcasters sa CNN. Pero ang sabihin ko na sa inyo, this is just a message, no? This is God's word and God's work through me. It's different from where I'm working right now. Pag nag-work ako, is trabaho ko yun. Pag hindi natuwa, I'm in training department. Pag hindi natuwa yung aking mga training participants, mababa yung appraisal ko, lagot ako sa boss ko. Because that's my work for my boss and for the company. And if it's good, I will probably get a good appraisal or increment or whatever but here this is there's no appraisal this is God looking at me I don't have to please every one of you or even one of you I have to please God because same 40 days Nineveh shall be overthrown the message of the gospel right for God simple for God so loved the world that he gave his only son Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ died for you and me that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That is the message of the gospel. Everything na nasa Bible is about gospel. It is about the saving, the saving knowledge na dapat nating tanggapin sa ating mga puso. And have you been to the fish belly? Nasubukan nyo na bang pumunta sa fish belly ng inyong buhay? Hmm? Kumain ng fresh belly. But what I mean is not the literal fish belly. So when God wanted you, sometimes no, you are in the umbrella of the grace of God. You are already a Christian. But we are stubborn. We are disobedient. We want to go out, right? I want to go out. God wants me to go to Nineveh, but I went to Tarshish. And God will put you a great storm. Hanggang yung mga tao sabihin na, ano ba ginawa mo? Bakit nagkaganyan? So it, ihulog nyo na lang ako sa dagat. Have you been to the great fish belly ng buhay nyo. Not a literal belly. So again, I have to share quickly. So, I've been to that valley, belly one time in my life. And it's not three days, it's three months of my life. I was proud and arrogant so much, not outwardly but in my heart. Ang sabi ko sa sarili ko, I am an engineer. I work in a good company. Then God has put that situation in my life that I was retrenched in the Philippines, napunta ako na Singapore. So I was so excited. And until that day, napunta ako na Singapore, I went to a company which you probably wouldn't believe. <clears throat> it's like a cult. My salary was cut for almost a half. I worked for 12 and a half hours a day. I've been scolded for 3 to 10 times a day. Not a simple scolding, but humiliating. Something like, do you even have even a drop of brain in your head in front of many people working for long hours and if you talk to your colleague for about one or two minutes let's say you say hey Gilbert and Manolito you come to my office and they will scold you and sometimes they wouldn't scold you just for the two of you they will call the whole department and tell that these two guys are not performing every night I was crying literally 
The first day, <clears throat> I, can, I, I still remember, I didn't call my wife because I told you, I'm an engineer. <clears throat> Pagdating ko sa Singapore, pagtawag ko, I was crying. Naloko ko. Naloko ko sa sweldo, naloko ko ng placement fee. I almost wanted to punch his face out of my anger. Parang okay na sa akin para makulong, parang ganun. But God has really, imagine no. Dinala niya ako dun sa lugar na yun so that I would be stronger. So I could share that the three days or the three months that I've been in that company was a solitary time. That was the time that I was closest to God. And it's amazing. Talaga, ang buti ng Panginoon. Now, my question with you is that how is Jonah affect your life in a daily basis? Have you been to the fish belly in your life? Most of the time, we rebel against God. God wants us to go to our Nineveh, but we went to a different way to Tarshish, right? But God is always has or had his own ways to mold us para maging mas of better service tayo sa kanya so that we might be stronger, more useful, at makita yung buhay ng Panginoon sa atin. Again, we are still in process. I've been to that process of turning from Tarshish to Nineveh. I've been to that fish belly, but I'm still struggling because we're still sinners. Sabi nga ni Pastor Jason, as Christians, we are in, not in sinless perfection, but sincere progression. We are still in process. So all of us are works in progress. But again, this book of Jonah, may I ask you a question, what has Jonah done to your life after we hear and listen to this message? Napakabuti ng Panginoon, no? Nung unang nakita ko tong mensahe na to, I was meditating on it, even sa MRT, even bago matulog, even sa umaga. Sabi ko, ito unang naisip ko, no? Sabi ko kasi sa, sa, sa wife ko, wala naman akong makitang maganda sa buhay ni Jonah. Paano ko kaya isi-share to? Kasi he was a prophet. Most of the prophets, even not all of the prophets, they should be good. But there is a great, great message for us about Jonah. Because we are like Jonah, right? We are, we were disobedient. And once we obey, we are like the Nineveh in one point in our time. We were cruel, we were wicked, we are selfish, we are greedy. But how much yung kasalanan ginawa natin, walang gaanong kabigat sa Panginoon. Because that's the reason why He sent His Son, Jesus Christ. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever, no? Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that is the message of salvation. And I know that the God of Jonah is my God right now. How about you? And although the God who forgives the Assyrians and Nineveh is the one who forgives me. And I would like to share, kaya nga, nandito ngayon, because the book of the Bible is not just a historical references. I always love to read and share the Bible for the purpose of not only knowing the facts or information, but I hope that the message of the Bible, every word in the Bible, will have an impact and make a difference in our lives, in our daily lives, sa ating buhay. The way we live, the way we think, and the way we live out. So, it's always good to read the Bible and pray to God and have fellowship with brothers and sisters. And uh, so, ito po yung buhay ni Jonah, and I hope na marami tayong natutunan sa kanya, that loving the enemy is a command of, from God. We can't do it, but we should follow and obey this great commission. Amen? So let us pray. Father in heaven, uh, salamat po sa hapong ito that you have given us uh, time and opportunity to learn your word and to listen to the life of Jonah. Lord, we are oftentimes like Jonah who are, who are disobedient Panginoon sa aming mga ginagawa na instead na sundin ka, Lord, we follow, we tend to follow our own tendencies which is to fulfill what we want, not what you want. We were also like the Ninevites, Lord, that we are sinful, we are 
cruel, we are selfish. But again, Lord, thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, na pinadala mo sa amin upang kami itubusin sa aming mga pagkakasala. Lord, we don't have to do anything but just to receive Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior. Lord, salamat sa iyong compassion. Salamat sa iyong pagmamahal na hindi ka nagbabago. You are always faithful, Panginoon. Lord, dalangin namin that you send us, Lord, kung saan mo man mo kami gustong dalhin. Gamitin mo ang aming buhay, Lord, as we continue to pursue our lives dito sa Singapore, Lord. We don't have to go overseas. We know that even in our workplaces, even in our neighborhood, or even if we go back to our respective homes in our countries, Lord, or sa school or sa neighborhood, you can use us, Lord. Show us the mission field, Lord. Kagaya na ginawa mo kay Jonah, that, uh, you direct him to Nineveh. Show us the Nineveh of our lives, Lord, so that our life may be useful, Lord, by your Holy Spirit, ka po ang tumulong sa amin. Salamat po, Panginoon, because of your grace, because of your love and mercy, and thank you for your forgiveness. And all this we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen.